Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to 30 Minutes on Wins with God's Precious One. This is Bishop M. Precious Fox uh, with Life Impact Church International, joining you for our weekly online Bible study series from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We want to welcome you, and uh, today it is Wednesday, May the 6th of 2020 and that just reminded me i have to make a special phone call when i get off the line uh, it's my cousin sherry's birthday so i want to wish her a happy birthday on today on tonight and make sure that i make that call <laughs> she's one of those ones we grew up together so we're considered to be what they call sister cousins since we grew up in the house together um, we treat each other like sisters uh, more so than cousins so it's my sister cousin's birthday so shout out to her on today shout out to each and every one of you whose birthday is today Today are celebrating in the month of May. Um, there's a lot of May babies um, that are out there. Uh, we also want to uh, offer our condolences to the Atkins family at the Colonial Life Impact Church. Uh, we've lost a great pioneer and a senior member, uh, one of the mothers of the church. Um, Sister Glossy Atkins, and we thank her. We praise God for her transition. Um, her homegoing service or gravesite service will be on tomorrow. So those of you who can join, um, uh, follow up with Pastor Ellis, and he can give you the details on where that will be. Also sending special prayers out to Deacon Jimmy, uh, who's also suffering loss in his family, and to each and every family that is out there um, who's suffering loss, uh, illness, sickness. There is nothing that is too hard for our God, and we just want you to know um, that we are praying for you. We are praying with you and your families and our hearts um, are fervently seeking God uh, because we know that God can heal the land. He will heal the land and we are trusting him to heal the land. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to continue in this series that we started last week that simply says a still small voice, a still small voice. God bless you, uh, Brother Johnny Phillips for joining. Thank you. So um, just for those of you who may be joining us for the first time, this is our outline for Bible study. We always go through the purpose, the objectives, the main text, and then the series outline. Now, since this is part two, we're going to move relatively quickly through the parts that we've already covered, um, but we still want to reiterate it for those who may have missed part one, just so that you get the information. So the purpose of this lesson entitled A Still Small Voice is simply to understand. We want to understand the speaking voice of God. Um, many people say, oh, God's not speaking today. Yes, he is. Y you need to learn how to uh, acknowledge when you hear his voice, uh, know what his voice sounds like. He is speaking very loudly, <laughs> but it's a gentle voice. And so because his voice may be gentle, you may not recognize it. And even in the midst of frustration and turmoil, God is speaking. He's speaking through the wind. He's speaking through the clouds, speaking through nature, speaking through children, through anyone that will listen and anyone that will hear. He's speaking through his word. We just have to get to a place where we understand the speaking voice of God, that we seek to hear his voice in every situation and circumstance that we're faced with, and that we wait patiently to hear his voice, his guidance, his direction. Because even in the midst of this frustrating time, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of chaos, we ought to be listening for his guiding voice, his direction, the peace that he gives uh, through his voice voice, that still small voice of the Lord. So that's the whole purpose. We want to reiterate that and encourage you to listen for that voice, even in the midst of what you're going through. 
So what are our objectives? Number one, we wanted to explore the biblical example of Elijah, the prophet, and his lifestyle. What is it that he did when he wanted to hear from God and he was preparing himself to hear from God? And we want to study it so that we can mimic it. We want to mimic what Elijah did, uh, take the example that Elijah gave us and actually start to apply it in our own lives so that we can prepare to hear the voice of God, which is still speaking and is still very relevant today for whatever it is we're facing in our lives. Number two, we're going to reason together. There were four specific points that we're going to talk about uh, throughout the series with supporting scriptures for each point. So we covered point number one last week. Uh, we introduced number two. So we're going to start with number two on tonight. So I'll show you the slide for number one, but we won't go through number one in detail like we did on last week. And then of course, objective number three is where you all get to participate. We have that comment uh, screen over there on the side where you can go in and type your comments. If you have questions, even if you have reflections, like while I'm talking, something comes in your mind, you want to give us some insights, or maybe you want to answer somebody's question, feel free to do that. That's what Bible study is all about. It's about studying, learning, and growing together um, in God's grace. So number three is where you actually get to participate. Um, send us your insights, your questions, your reflections, um, even the answers to some of the questions that you may see in the feed over there. Let us study and grow together. All right. So then our main text, uh, if you're playing catch up, came from 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 through 18. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 18. And that helped us to cover objective number one. Now, when we studied about Elijah, we talked about the historical context of the scripture, which is always important. You, you need to always make sure you get that. Um, historical context deals with who, what, where, when, how, why, answering those kind of questions so that we understand um, the culture, uh, the climate, uh, the timing, who was involved, where this event might have occurred, and why um, it was written for us to to give us inspiration and hope. Why is it listed there? So number one, we talked about the fact that King Ahab was there, his wife Jezebel, the queen, of course, the prophet Elijah, the angel of the Lord. Uh, we hear the voice of God, a messenger of God. We hear about Elisha, Heziel, Jehu, Baal, and of course, the remnant. Uh, where? Uh, well, this started out a uh, journey in Mount Carmel, and the prophet Elijah started in Mount Carmel where he had this triumphant victory um, where he went against the prophets of Baal. And it was just him one alone against the 450 prophets of Baal. And he contended against them and, of course, won this triumphant victory over them. And, you know, anytime you have this triumphant victory in God, you can expect that after that is going to be some true tribulation, some true testing, and even some true comfort from the Almighty God, uh, as we've seen throughout Scripture, that anytime a, a great victory is won or a great battle uh, is won and we are triumphant in that victory, that's when true testing comes after that victory. And so it is reflective of how things happen with us. We have as Christians, these seasons of, of good things that are happening to us where we're at the mountaintop and, and we have victory in God and we're triumphant. And then the next thing you know, there's this uh, circumstance or situation or something that happens that seeks to knock us off of our faith and to, to uh, cause us to lose faith in God and to not have um, the same type of hope and faith. But if we would stay with God, it is meant to build us. It's meant to teach us patience. It's meant um, to increase our faith. It is meant to take us from glory to glory to glory to glory in God. And so we must remain faithful. And so we found Elijah on Mount Carmel. And then we find him running into the wilderness um, because Jezebel has sent out this decree that she's going to kill him. And so he runs for his life. Um, away from Jezebel, who's upset that she, he killed the prophets of Baal. And because she's upset about the way that he killed those prophets of their pagan God, uh, she's uh, sent word that she's going to do to him what he did to those prophets. And so we find the prophet Elijah running to the wilderness. So from Mount Carmel, that victory there, uh, running now for his life into the wilderness. And then finally to Mount Horeb, um, where he hears the voice of God uh, giving him comfort and letting him know, um, number one, he thought he was the only remnant or one that was left 
enough to defend God, but God had to let him know, no, I always have a remnant. <laughs> it's not just you one alone. I always have a remnant. And so that's what we learned as we studied the main text. And um, of course, the why here was because we wanted to understand um, that God is the deliverer. That's why this text is written there. Number one, God is a deliverer. Uh, number two, we wanted to talk about the fact that when you are in a dangerous or tumultuous time in your life, that is not the time to um, not listen for the voice of God, but that is the kind time to steal away to God, to really, really steal away to God, to listen uh, for that still small voice, which will give you the guidance in the direction that you need and also the instructions that you need to carry you through that situation. There are some things we want God to just deliver us and we want him to do it immediately, but there are some situations and circumstances that we have to go through it. It's making us, it's molding us, it is shaping us into the person that God has created us to be. For many of us, he's tapping in um, to pull those things out of us that he placed inside of us um, before the foundation of the world that we didn't know were in there. And except we go through adversity, except we go through trials and tribulations, we wouldn't know how resilient we were. We wouldn't know how diligent we were. We wouldn't know how determined we were. We wouldn't know what kind of fighter we were. We wouldn't know how, what kind of faith we have um, in God had we not gone through those adverse situations and adverse circumstances. And so um, when you're going through those situations, that is the time to seek God, to set yourself still and to wait to hear his voice because God is speaking and he's given instructions. And then once you get those instructions, you want to make sure that you're obedient to the word of God. So because we did this part last week, we're not going to go through it again. This was just us reading the scriptures here, reading 1 Kings 19, 1 through 18. So if you want to catch up, you'll have to read that part on your own. And so... This brings us up to where we are on tonight. So here are the four points that we, we've been talking about. Number one, we talked about the fact that you have to separate yourself, enter in and be still. Too many of us are too busy moving around, running around, doing too much stuff, even if it's stuff for the, the church, the building, the programs, the anniversaries, all of these things that we, we do to fill up and occupy our time are keeping us so busy that we cannot really hear what it is that God is speaking to us, giving us direction, guidance, and instructions for our lives. And so we are going to have to learn how to separate ourselves, actually set aside some time for meditation set aside some time to listen to the speaking voice of God, set aside time to tell God that you want to hear his voice, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of these things will be added unto you. We've got to set aside some time, separate yourself, let God know that you are hungry for him, that you are thirsty for him, hungry for his righteousness, hungry for uh, doing the things that pertain to God and that you want to please him and please his heart. Number two is where we'll be tonight talking about yielding um, in humble obedience and submission to God um, and listening to the spiritual instructions that he gives. Now, sometimes when we're listening for the voice of God, um, we don't hear God because he's telling us something we don't want to hear. <laughs> in other words, he's speaking. He's telling us exactly what to do. But because it's not something we really want to do, the yielding part becomes uh, very difficult for us because we don't want to surrender, surrender our lives, our hearts, our minds, uh, our bodies, whatever it may be that is required of us in order to follow the instructions of God. But we have to yield. We have to surrender, uh, knowing that whatever God is instructing us to do is going to be good for us. We may not understand it. We may not see it all, um, but we have to trust and know as it is written in Jeremiah 29 and 11 that he has thoughts and plans that he thinks towards us, thoughts to prosper us and thoughts of peace to bring us to an expected end. And if you have your faith and your trust and your hope in God, you know that he's going to bring you to an expected end. And that expected end is going to be for his glory. And it is going to work together for your good as it is written in Romans 8 and 28. For we know that all things <laughs> work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those that are the called according to his purpose. Uh, hopefully tonight we'll be able to get to number three. So I'm hoping to cover number two and number three on tonight if we can, and then we'll follow up with part number three to cover number four. So part three, we're going to talk about the fact that if you don't know God's voice, 
uh, part of that and wanting to learn how to get to know his voice is studying his word. You're going to have to read. You're going to have to read the word. You're going to have to meditate on it, study it. And uh, not only that, but as the word of God is being studied by you, you have to get to a place where um, you're ready to defend God's word. You're ready to give an answer to anyone who asks a question about your faith. Why is it that you believe what you believe? So we're going to talk a little bit about apologetics and how important it is for you to be solid and have a firm foundation in what you believe in for Jesus Christ, our Lord, and be ready to defend him, be ready to defend your faith in him. And then number four, um, like I said, number four always seems to be that action, that, that call to action where we've talked about what you need to do. Uh, and, you know, it's all been theory, theory, theory. And then we get to that last one. And that last one is usually about exercising something, which means an action word. We have to do something. This is not about... Um, you know, just reading it, hearing it, it goes in one ear, out the other ear. We want God's word to permeate us in a way that it changes our actions. It changes the way we live, the way we move, the way we have our being. And so we want to start exercising what we saw Elijah do, exercise whatever patience is needed to hear the still small voice of God and wait really, truly, truly seek to hear his voice, seek to know his purpose, his plan for your life and wait on God, wait to hear what it is, those instructions that he has for you. So this was objective number one. What we did is we went back and we picked up first Kings 19 verses one through four and talked about the fact that after this mighty demonstration of God's power on Mount Carmel, Elijah fled. We find him just running for his life to get away from uh, Jezebel, who has threatened to kill him. And he goes alone. He went alone. This is that separate yourself. He went alone to pray. He stilled himself under the juniper tree. In other words, I told you, you got to be still. <laughs> too much running around, too much moving, too much busyness, and you will miss the voice of God speaking to you, a still small voice. And so um, this was, again, encouragement, looking at Elijah's example to steal away, to get away. He went into the wilderness. For many of us, we don't have a wilderness to get away to, <laughs> but we can make closets. We we have rooms. We have places. Uh, some people sit in their cars in their driveway before they go in their houses just to meditate, study the word of God. Uh, some people go in their restrooms. They make closets, whatever you need to do to separate yourself so that you can have some time to truly, truly meditate and listen for the voice of God and to study his word and so forth so that you can have have time alone to pray. And we have an example. So we took Elijah's example and we wanted to expand upon it um, and actually look at what Jesus examples that he gave us. And he gave us some good examples too. Uh, we see that Jesus went away alone to pray in all of those scriptures that are listed there, um, letting us know that that separating yourself is one of the key actions that need to be done when you want to hear the still small voice of God. And so even when things are turbulent and tumultuous in your life and you have circumstances that it just seems like you can hardly breathe, you can hardly move. I'm telling you, it's time to separate yourself, steal away to God because he is, he has all the answers. He is our way maker, our miracle worker, whatever you need. That's why he calls himself. I am that I am. If you need a deliverer that I I am. You need a healer that I am. You need a financial uh, advisor that I am. You need a lawyer in the courtroom that I am. He's the I am that I am. He's all of that and more. And so Jesus gave us the example of uh, stealing away that separating ourselves and going alone to pray. And then of course, in Matthew six verses five through six, we were given instructions about the difference between uh, these hypocritical um, the Sadducees and Pharisees who wanted to pray in the open. They wanted everybody to know they were praying <laughs> um, versus, you know, going into your closet and praying. We were given closet instructions that when we pray that we go into our secret place and the father, uh, which here is us in secret, will reward us openly. And so we were given those instructions there. And so this is step number one. Step number one, to hear the still small voice of God, looking at Elijah's example, this is where we would start. So then let's talk about step number two. And this is where I need you to get your Bibles because this is where we are for tonight. And we're going back, looking at what Elijah did in 1 Kings 19, 5 through 7. And that's where we're going to pick it up. And while I'm getting that scripture there, 1 Kings 19, 1 through 
excuse me, nine, five through nine. We're going to pick that up. And then our, our other scriptures for tonight are coming from first Samuel chapter 15 verses one through three. Then verse 7 through 11, and then finally 19 through 23. And the reason that we put that there is because we want to give you another example of why details matter to God. It's important that if God gives you instructions that you follow the details. The details are important. <laughs> uh, I was going to put a quote in here that we hear all the time, but I changed my mind about it. But they um, used to say um, in some of my accounting courses, because that's my background in my career as an accountant, is that the devil is in the details. <laughs> so when you're looking for that last penny or, or trying to reconcile something to the dollar or to the penny, it's in the details. <laughs> it, you really, really have to dig really, really deep in order to get those numbers to reconcile. And so it is the same thing with God. When you want, uh, God is giving you an instruction and you want the end result. In order to get, to, to get that end result, that means you're going to have to follow the details of the instruction. And Saul gave us an example of what it was to not fully follow the details of the instructions of God. And we don't want to follow Saul's example. So we're going to read his example and make sure that we do not follow his example. We want to follow the example that was given to us by Elijah. And then we'll close out number two with Philippians 2 and 8. And then I encourage you that if you have any scriptures you want to add um, that talk about yielding in humble obedience to spiritual instructions, that you can do so in our comment feed over there while we read these scriptures. All right, so we're picking it up now. First Kings 19, beginning at verse five. This is Elijah laying under a juniper tree. And it says, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. So he separated himself. He entered in through prayer. While he laid there praying, he fell asleep under the juniper tree. And behold, while he was sleeping, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Verse 6 says, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. So Elijah awoke from his sleep, obeyed the voice of the angel, the instructions that were given to him. He ate the cake that was on the coals and he drank the water that was his at his head and then he laid down again and so here we find elijah taking that example he yielded to the instruction of the lord he went out he began to pray as he was praying he fell asleep this is the example fell asleep under that juniper tree he separated himself there and while he was there that's when god sent an angel angel came and touched him told him to arise and eat he obeyed the instructions of the angel he arose and he ate then verse seven says, and the angel of the Lord, this is him going back to sleep at the end of verse six. Verse seven says, and the angel of the Lord came again the second time. This is two times he's visited by the angel of the Lord and touched him and said, arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. Again, Elijah obeys in verse eight, and it says, and he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat for 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. So we talked about Mount Horeb earlier. Remember I told you Elijah went from Mount Carmel, this great triumphant victory. Then he ran from Jezebel to the wilderness, which is where we find him now under the juniper tree. And then now he's been given instructions by this angel to go to Mount Horeb, the Mount of God. And not only was he given instruction, but he was given what he needed. You know, we pray in our prayer. Give me this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And we say that. Um, because we're asking God that whatever it is we need for this day, whatever strength we need, whatever nourishment, whatever sustenance, whatever it is we need uh, spiritually and naturally for this day, give us that, our daily bread, whatever is needed. And what was given to Elijah by the angel was not just what he needed for that day, but what he needed to get him for 40 days and 40 nights until he made his journey to Horeb, the Mount of God. 
Then verse 9 says, And he came thither unto a cave. So now we find him in Mount Horeb. In a cave is where he lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? So we want to hear the still small voice of God. Elijah's example was, number one, we had to separate ourselves. We had to steal away. We had to enter in through prayer. And then we had to obey the instructions that we were given. Now an angel comes to visit twice. And we see that Elijah had to yield himself. He had to um, become humble and obedient to the spiritual instructions that were being given. Had he not eaten the second time and said, well, I'm full from the first time. I don't want to eat this second time. He would not have had the sustenance that he needed in order to make the journey that he needed all the way to Mount Horeb. And so it's important that if you've been given instructions by God, that you follow those details, the detail of those instructions. If he tell you to eat again, you eat again. He tell you to go left, don't go right. And then say, well, I'll go left uh, down the road. You go left when he tells you to go left. He tells you to go right, you go right when he tells you to go right. And you say, oh, but the right looks like it's an easier road to travel. If I go down the left, uh, I'm gonna um, bust my tires or something else. You don't know what's down the right. But God knows what's on the right. That's why he told you to go to the left. <laughs> and so we need to be mindful that uh, our vision is short. We, we can only see but so far. But God knows that expected end that he's trying to get us to. And so we have to yield um, in humble obedience to the spiritual instructions that we are given and listen for that still small voice. And here we see that the word of God came to Elijah in verse nine um, after he's been obedient to the instruction that he was given from the angel and the word of the Lord came to him saying, what doest thou here, Elijah? And that's what we want. We want to get to a place um, where we've been, we've separated ourselves. We've uh, yielded, we've entered in to God's presence. Uh, we are listening for his voice. And then he speaks. We want to hear him speak. The word of the Lord needs to come to us and say to us, what doest thou here? We want him to meet us in our prayer closet um, because we follow the details of those instructions. All right. So let's pick up these last two scriptures scriptures um, and make sure that we're following those instructions to the letter of the detail that God has given unto us. So y'all know the story of Samuel, uh, Saul and Samuel and how Samuel anointed Saul to be king over Israel. He was the king that was chosen by the people. He was the people's choice. <laughs> and so, um, of course, Samuel in uh, chapter 15, verses one through three gives him instructions. Let's read those instructions. So Samuel also said unto Saul that the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Hearken meaning listen, not just listen, but listen and do. Listen, do and understand. <laughs> um, hearken here just doesn't mean listen. It means to listen, to do and to understand. Understand it, do it. And, and listen to it. Okay, verse two says, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way, and when he came up from Egypt. Verse three says, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So those were the instructions that were given according to uh, God and the word of the Lord through the prophet Samuel unto Saul about what he was supposed to do with Amalek, with the sheep, with the women, the men, the infants, the oxen, all of the things that they had and they own. So then verse seven, this is what we're looking at, partial obedience and what happens with partial obedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. I don't care what anybody tells you. It's just like uh, how they say a little lie or it's just a little white lie. Uh, a little lie is a lie. <laughs> partial obedience is disobedience. It's disobedience. We have to yield in humble obedience to the spiritual instructions that we've been given. All right. Verse seven says this. And Saul smote the Amaleks from Havilah until thou comest to Shur. That is over against Egypt. 
and he took Agag, the king of the Amaleks. Okay, so God told him to smite them all, but he took the king. That's the first act of disobedience. He took him alive and utterly destroyed all the people. So then he did follow the instructions. He killed both man and woman, you know, instructions, and uh, infants and sucklings, but then he kept one alive. So that was that first act of disobedience. Then he goes on in verse nine and says, but Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep. That's disobedience. He said in verse three to kill all the ox, kill all the sheep, kill the camels and kill the ass. But they kept the best of the sheep. Uh, they kept the oxen. They kept the fatlings and the lambs and all that they thought was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, they destroyed those things. So the things that they saw that they thought were good, those were the things that they kept. Um, uh, but everything else they destroyed. Everything else we were obedient, God. I mean, imagine saying that to God. God gives you instructions to do something. And you say, well, I did this part of it but I didn't do that part. And so God is saying that that partial uh, obedience is disobedience. And so of course we see what happens to Saul here. In verse 11, it says, uh, I'll start with 10. It says, then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, it repented me that I have set up Saul to be king for he is turned back from following me and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. Wherefore, and I'm in verse 19 now, 19 through 23 says, wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said unto Samuel, yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And see, that's, you know, we've been corrected and we've been told that partial obedience is disobedience. And this is what Saul was trying to convince Samuel that I did obey. I obeyed the voice of the Lord and, and, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. And in verse 21, he says, but the people, you know, and then we start blaming other people for why we have not obeyed the voice of God. And in 21, he says, but the people took of the spoil and the sheep and the oxen and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And, you know, when we're in leadership, we need to take the brunt of the responsibility. It's our duty to make sure that we instruct the people according to the word of God. And it is our duty to make sure that there is follow through for that. And Saul here did not take responsibility for his kingship, for his leadership, but yet and still he um, told God that he was obedient and, and it was the people. The people made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> and God doesn't want to hear that. That's disobedience. The instructions were given to us and we must obey the speaking voice of God. Uh, 23 says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. But because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And you know what happens later on. And we talk about the scripture. Um, I skipped it. Verse 23 it just says, behold, it's better to um, obey than it is to sacrifice. It is better to hearken than the fat of rams. And so we want to make sure that we obey the letter of the law, that we yield ourselves in humble submission to God and to his instructions. I'm going to allow you to read Philippians 2 and uh, 8 on your own. That is our final scripture for tonight. Doesn't look like we got to number three, but we'll pick it up next week in part number three there. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us on tonight. I'm going to go ahead and give you the screen so you can see the scripture. Uh, for the third part. So this is where we'll pick it up next week, just talking about studying God's word, um, which is our next step or uh, piece of information there in our series that we want to share with you. We've talked about separating yourself. We've talked about yielding to God. And then next week, we want to talk about uh, studying the word of God so that we can hear that still small voice. So it has been 30 minutes, looks like 31 minutes on my end. So we want to be obedient, making sure we keep this right at 30 minutes. I have enjoyed my time with you all. I want to say thank you again for joining. And we are going to continue this lesson on next week, Lord willing, the still small voice of God. And your closing psalm of encouragement tonight is coming from Psalm 27, which is a very familiar psalm. 
I'm just going to read it as we close. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. And though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. And though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me and he shall set me up upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yea I will sing praises unto the Lord hear O Lord when I cry with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me when thou sayest seek ye my face my heart said unto thee thy face lord will i seek hide not thy face far from me put not thy servant away in anger thou hast been my help leave me not neither forsake me o god of my salvation when my father and my mother forsake me then the lord will take me up Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are rising up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. Then David says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Thank you for joining 30 Minutes on Wins with God's Precious One. This is Bishop M. Precious Fox with Life Impact Church International Ministries. My email address can be found there on the slide as well as my phone number if you need to call or text me. Have a wonderful evening and Lord willing, we'll see you on next week. God bless.